Good morning, afternoon, or evening wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your residence tinkerer and meta rotter, and this is the MetaRot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now this week, as we wrap up week one of the Evangelion collab going on all month, it looks like we have even more content to be had and to be found as we go right into week two, with the introduction of two further units of the collaboration, a brand new event to pick up right where the old one left off, with an equal amount of very nice rewards to be had and collected. But in addition to the collaboration, we also got some big pieces of news to highlight the incoming update that's going to be going live later this month, and there's going to be a massive amount of changes to be made to help balance to make for game balances and quality of life. But I am getting ahead of myself on that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into week two of the Evangelion collab, A Cruel Metal's Thesis, and start off with the gotcha banners of what to expect for this week specifically. Starting off, we see with the introduction of EVM02 and Unit 2, with a kit of Precognition, Cross Shock, Disaster, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Through Fight. And then, of course, the addition of EVM 03N Unit 05 with a kit of Micro Shock, Pile, Charge Drain, Wheeled Legs, and the Leg Ability of Auto Charge. Now, one thing you'll notice right from start, aside from, of course, being shiny new models of a collab, is the fact that Unit 02 is packing two brand new skills to be introduced to the game Cross Shock and Disaster. And explaining both of those briefly, Cross Shock, as the best I could find for translation, is simply a scattered AoE similar to Claw or Charge Claw, but it has passive defense ignore and a high crit chance, which means you'll be dealing the most pain possible even with having scattered damage. Disaster, based on what I was able to piece out with the translations, roughly equates to a melee variant of Destroy but with Pierce damage. So we'll have to see how exactly those two moves stack up once they do officially go live this week. Now, Unit 05 may not be packing anything new to the game that we haven't seen yet, but it may also be, but, it, but I do have to mention, he is the very first instance of a suicide type bot that is not, and I repeat, not a meta change type model, much akin to Hikara Mate, who has sacrificed while transformed. Unit 5 has Microshock, which means he is Metaforce Reliant, but he will deal the highest amount of pain possible, but with that being a suicide kill streak, the moment the guarantee that he goes down when he uses it. So much like with Unit 2, it will be very nice to see if Unit 2 and, Zero and Unit 5 will pose any major threat to changing up the game once they do officially go live. Now with the brand new units aside, we do have a couple reruns also going live this week as well, and that is a rerun of ONH0 Sarahime, the, Oni, the Onihime type, with a kit of Dominion, Effect Clear, Hold, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Blowbeat. And then we also have a rerun of MGY0 Gato Alpar, with a kit of Suction, Double Break, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Battle Stance. Now, in comparison to the collab units, these two definitely may not be super high on the roster, but it is actually worth noting that there are still some very good skills to be had between these two girls alone. The Minion, for instance, has a very, very good support skill you can use anywhere very easily, and Gato, of course, has double break on both arms, which are always, which are always openly welcome for anyone that needs heavy punish when building a team. Female teams especially are where these two especially thrive. That being said, there really is going to be no major priority over who to shoot for, but naturally collab units will take priority. Now for those that are worried, let me assure you in the fact that units 0 and 01 will be sticking around all month, which means if you still haven't had the chance to collect them yet, but you do want to start making some progress towards unit 02 and 05, don't find yourself in a rush and feel free to go after the newer ones first. But I will make a moment. I will take a moment and say that they are dumping a lot of gotcha models on us this month with this collaboration. So, even though it will be very heavily draining on your resources, even though normally with collabs, I like to say gotta collect, you know, collect them all, do what you can because we may not see them again. With this event, you may want to prioritize just shooting for ones that you particularly want, and maybe aim for ones after you collect them to say round out the collection. I will leave that to your own personal discretion going forward, because the units are still very good. 
Now, for the fierce battles we have this week, a little lower key on what to expect, but still some varied, varied skills all the same. Starting the lineup, we have RBT-05M, Chrono Rabbit, with a kit of Beam, Shoot Trap, um, Guard Boost, Wheeled Legs, and the Leg Ability of Auto Charge. Behind him, we have MIP-0 May Puppy from the Zodiac series from Metarod R, with the kit of Trap Clear, Stat Cleanse, Effect Clear, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Absand. And then, last but not least, another mod another fierce battle we actually have not seen for a while now, and that is HPP Zero Hip Hop Pajamas with the kit of Stealth, Double Break Hammer, Tank Legs, and the Leg Ability of Trap Buster. Now, as I mentioned, there are some very scattered and varied skills of varying a uh, varied utility between these three. But at the very least, if you are new or or a rookie meta rotter, it is still worth collecting these three just for the sake of having them. That being said, even though I tend not to grade models with tank legs super high, I do have to give MVP of the week to Hip Hop Pajamas specifically, given that Break Hammer is a very welcome skill, even if it is a heavy part, that you can make use of anywhere, especially in any team that needs heavy punish. Because especially in competitive and recent, it's almost always guaranteed you're going to find someone with at least two heavy parts that can easily capitalize on this weakness if used correctly. Now with the event itself, going back to it for just a minute, we do have to see the introduction of the remaining three super rare collab meta rotters, which are Nozomi, Ibuki, and Iku, um, to, be in to be joining the rest of the collab for the remaining of the month. These particular skills are rather nasty, being completely honest, and all very useful skills that anyone could use at any level very easily. Starting the lineup, just to kind of break them down, meta rotter Ibuki there, who is donning the 0-2 suit, and offers a skill of a 35% buff to your charge gauge when you break a part. And in addition, for that one turn, you also get a 60% boost to your base power to make sure and guarantee that you're going to break at least something when you activate that skill. Nozomi donning the 0-5 suit it, it will buff all stats minus armor by 120% for one turn, which guarantees that you are going to be the absolute tank the Paladin, the Rogue, and the Nuker all in one for that one turn. But after that one turn expires, your stats will then swell back down to normal and then debuff by 20% for five turns. Now, we have had something similar to this with um, Ranunkula from the Metarot Day events that buffed it by 100% and then debuffed by 10% for 10 turns. So relatively similar debuff, but still just as punishing if you don't know how to use it. And then last but not least, Iku donning an angel outfit, will get, that means that your next hit will be guaranteed a critical hit, and in addition you will get a plus 100 to your heat to guarantee you will have the highest edge with speed when taking your turn. So again, all three of these meta rotters will be very powerful and very good skills to make use of, especially if you miss out on, say, the, the meta rot day collab units such as Ranuncula, um, where you were able to miss out on those bonuses. This will be a good place to pick them up and make good use of them. With the event itself, as I mentioned earlier, we are getting a part two, which will pick up right where part one left off, but with a little change up of the event and some new rewards to be had. This time around, in addition to Meta Rotter Hitomi with a with the collab skin, we have access to new rewards to join the roster this time around as the new as the first event closes. This time around, players can have access to the Dice Medal with the with a mastery in melee, support, and healing, with leg mastery in biped, wheel, and tank. We have access to limited time skins for Sarahime and Gato Alpar, which are the two highlighted rerun units for this week as well as a second commemorative profile banner, um, similar to the red one that we have access to this week. And of course, we have access to many more reward tickets and much, much more, which will be a good chance to stock up on rubies for anyone that may have hemorrhaged a lot. And to be completely honest, we all hemorrhaged a lot when it came to rubies this week. And we're probably going to be doing so through the remainder of this week because there is just so much to go after. It is still going to be a very lucrative event all the same that is absolutely worth going after and making the most of. Now, in contrast to this week's to this week's wrapping up event, this week in specific will be ticket based, which means it doesn't necessarily going to prioritize you using pure sets. 
and instead mixed parts will be encouraged across the board when using them. This means that say if you manage to collect unit 02, you may want to recommend spreading the parts across your three bots to maximize that plus three silver ticket bonus. Or if you decide or if you get lucky with unit 01, same case. In this case as well with tickets, um, Sadahime, Gato Alpar, and Cross Messiah will be giving you the plus three for the blue tickets for a very easy collection. The Fierce Battles at plus one each and the Meta Rodders at plus two. Whereas the Collab Meta Rodders will be specifically giving you the silver tickets as well as the Collab Meta Rots all the same. So it will be very important that you spread your parts evenly if you want to maximize your bonuses this time around. Yeah. With all that aside with the event, now to the juicy stuff. As if the collab wasn't juicy enough. But this is highlighting the 3.2 update that will be going live at the end of the month. And they did mention with Meta League in particular, there are some major changes going on with that. But they did highlight this week in particular, we are getting a lot of changes to quality of life and game balances that will very heavily shake up the meta as they have been noticing a lot of very easily abusable parts between support and healing and nuking. So they definitely want to change things up, which I feel will be very openly welcomed additions and changes. Starting up the lineup here with the game updates, any scattered AoE skills, which are in which includes skills like Claw, Gatling, Charge Claw, and so on, can reduce a guard stance by up to three hits. Now, normally, when it when a guard stands with any kind of shield, this meant any hit was one charge to the shield before it expired. Now, scattered AoE will have even more versatility when using on the field by taking down three charges of a shield at once once it's live. The topic of shields, specialized guards such as shoot, melee, mirror, counter, and I believe even perfect guard to a point too, now will behave as regular guards when they are not intercepting their specific type. This means that shoot guard, for instance, will intercept all incoming blows, no matter what, but it will only intercept and nullify shooting type skills, but take regular damage from incoming melee strikes. Reverse can be said for melee count for melee guard and so on and so forth. Basically, they will behave as regular guards, similar to optic guard, gunpowder guard, and gravity guard, but with a little more of a contingency to them to make them easier to make use of. Stat cleanse will be getting a little bit of a nerf this time around, as it's very easy to see people abusing that either turn one or turn two for ailments. It will have a reduced uptime and number of hits before it expires before it needs to be reset again. So even though to folks that have been abusing stat cleanse for EX trials, I myself am one of them, this will be a very big change in particular to kind of help balance the game out and bring more versatility and, vi and viability back to using ailments. Then of course with support skills, which are normally very largely slept on, this includes shoot boost, fight boost, mobile boost, and so on, will be getting a massive boost from the usual 20 to 30% they offer, now to a staggering 50%. Now granted, this stack, this bonus cannot stack, but a 50% boost is going to be very easily noticeable compared to, say, a 20 or 30% boost. Radar Sight as well is included in this mix, which means it too will be getting a 50% bonus to success once it goes live. And as if these changes weren't enough, we are also getting a massive change to some meta forces and how they behave on the field. This will add a lot more viability to meta force relied, uh, relied support based and buffing, which are normally a lot harder and normally you don't see very often, but if used correctly can really turn the tables at the last second. The meta forces in particular that they highlighted for this starting up is power up, which buffs all stats minus armor by 10% will now be buffing our everything by 30%, which is a massive boost, much more noticeable and easier to see on the field once it goes live. The Metaphor Shinobi action will be getting a buff to its success and evade boost from 50% to 70%. Gravity or low gravity will have a success boost from times 2 to times 2.5, so probably the least noticeable of all the Metaphor's quality of life changes thus far, but still going to be very nice all the same, since, since success is tied to your likelihood of landing hits, as well as critical hits. The Metaphor's Berserk will be buffing all power from a 50% boost to an 80% boost, so definitely very good for your nukers and your high-end fighters. High Mobility will be buffing Evade from 50% to 100%, 
which means you'll be having a much easier time dodging or grazing a lot of incoming blows in comparison to, say, only an occasional one. Super Surge will be buffing success from 50% to a staggering 150%. This means that it's honestly going to be a blue moon that you even miss or an attack is grazed. And with that massive boot, there is, there is no reason whatsoever that you should not be landing critical hits every hit with a massive boost to your likelihood of crits with that kind of bonus. And then last but not least, high defense will be boosting your shoot and melee resist from 50% to 100%. Now normally with melee and shoot resist, you want to make sure you pay attention and make sure that these are particularly high and main to be maintained for your damage reduction. This means this will make the reducing damage a lot easier so that you can keep your damage low and stay on the field as long as possible. So these are just a few of the changes that they announced incoming for the 3.2 update. I really don't know how that's going to change a lot of viability of parts or sets that I may have previously graded or will be grading for future models, but it is very nice to see that they are trying to balance the game out a little bit because PvP and meta leagues have been making it very clear there are some very highly favored parts over others that can make the game very easily cheesable or a lot of skills abuse, abuse worthy. So these quality of life improvements will be seen very well. I'm very interested to see how they officially go live and how they will shake things up. On the community front, we are still always looking for translators for the Metarot 3 and Reloaded translation projects. Metarot 3 has been making good progress, and currently everything up to chapter one, everything up to chapter one story-wise, and all menus have been translated into English. So the game is for the most part playable already. Um, but if we would like to see the rest of the story translated, it is necessary that we have manpower for that. So if you would like to assist with that or any future projects such as Metarots 4 or 5 or Navi, we do need hands for that. So feel free to reach out to me or join our Discord in the link provided in the comments below and feel free to ask around and we can get you in touch with the right people to fill you in on what has been done and what still needs done up to this point. Now with the, with the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, I found this piece just yesterday actually by Twitter user Imantail, I do hope I did pronounce that correctly, or Imantail, highlighting a rather interesting cover art for a hypothetical uh, Metarot Reloaded anime, in this case like a season 2, highlighting Kagami with Musha Beetle which replaced Metabee's body, and also highlighting the new antagonist of the, man of the manga thus far, Old Superbia, the Fallen Angel type. Very wonderful work there. I do recall seeing them actually do a Season 1 promo poster as well for fun. Wonderful art. I do actually wish that we do see another anime at some point, whether that be a remake of the old one or a new one. I am open to anything at this point, so fantastic work to you. And do also follow this Twitter user here and a friend of mine on Discord, Twitter user at, at its word, who's been taking a duplicate model of the blackmail design from the um, 112 model, uh, Metarot models and revamping it into uh, Belzelga. Progress has been looking really promising and nice on that. Wonderful work, word. I am looking forward to seeing the final result once everything is pieced together and painted. But with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything here for this week's episode. So again, not a whole lot of new stuff per se, as we did already kind of expect the part two of the collab. Uh, but we did get a lot of news in terms of the 3.2 update, which will be very nice and very interesting to see. But with all that being said, once again, I do appreciate you all for stopping by, just as you always have been. If you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page and the Metabots Forever communities on there. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided in the comments below, and this will be your closest ear to the ground on the action. This includes any new merchandise, new art, new my weekly episodes, or even translation updates. That's the first place you will hear it before it goes anywhere else. You can also reach out to us, reach out to me personally on Twitter at Isagami Kura. If you have any questions or feedback or comments or suggestions, I leave my DMs open purposely for this very reason. I am also open to the possibility of maybe collabing or having a guest host here on with me on the sh on the show every here and there. So if you are interested in that, feel free to reach out to me and I'll see what I can make happen down the line with a later episode. Do also give these wonderful friends of mine a follow as well. Twitter user at Kuro Imo, who actually did, who's well, very well known for the uh, Metarot Row Battle medleys that are on YouTube currently, re and relatively recently finished with the Row Battle Medley 3 of nearly 40 minutes of Row Battle tunes, um, part of which I have used with permission for my outro. 
Definitely a, a very awesome friend of mine and wonderful work on your medleys. You do also give Twitter user at FlitlockGP a, a follow as well for some for all for more um, amazing Metarot art to add to your Twitter feeds. Fantastic art, wonderful style. I always love seeing what you put out when you work on new projects. But with all that being said, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you always do. Until next time, until this is your host, Kurt Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.